Hi everybody, uh, I'm gonna try to do it really quick on this one. I've actually done two versions of this already. Uh, so I'm gonna try and make it a quick one. This is an out of cycle episode. It's a YouTube only episode. I, I, I'm gonna try to use this camera. YouTube only episode. I got both cameras going. Um, so uh, it's not gonna be on the podcast, not on the website. And this is all about the iPhone 11. So the question is, should I buy it? Or should I stick with what I got? And if I decide to buy iPhone 11, which one should I get? All right, so that is the question of the day. Um, so let's go through uh, the advantages and disadvantages real quick. So the advantages of staying put, it's equipment I already know it works. I know how it works. Um, I'm actually, the, this pocket, I'm feeling really comfortable with the setup I have here. Control it with the iPad. I just figured out I can do white balance. Um, so I did adjust the white balance a little bit. Uh, you can't use white and gray cards though. Um, like you can with the uh, with the Canon Vixia, with camcorders, um, but that's that's the same thing at all. Even the iPhone, you can't use these anyway. There's no way to do it. Um, so, uh, but I do have this on. Uh, it's not necessarily auto exposure. It's on manual exposure, but I have the the the. Um, I have the frame rate, not the frame rate, the shutter speed at 120 since I'm recording at 4K 60. So you can do the what's it, the 180 rule or the 360 rule or whatever, so you can get smooth motion. This is gonna get downscaled to 1080p 30 frames per second anyway, so it's, it makes it smoother no matter what. Um, 400 ISO because it's kind of like a good, a good like middle ground with the sunlight. I'm using natural light. I'm not using my lights. Um, even if I did, the sunlight would kind of overpower the lights, kind of, maybe, sort of. Um, but I, like, if I'm, I can put this down to 200 ISO. It actually looks better. Um, I don't look overexposed. And 800, definitely overexposed. So we're gonna we're gonna drop it down to 200 on on the uh, on the Osmo Pocket because things look a bit richer, a little bit uh, don't look so over uh, over uh, overexposed. Whereas I locked in the expo well, I actually use auto exposure on the Vixia. I locked in the white balance, and it still looks pretty good. It actually probably looks better than than everything else. And that was one of the things. So the Vixia, I don't know for sure, but, and this is like, what, eight years old, nine years old camera? Bigger sensor. At least it should be a bigger sensor than, it's definitely bigger than what's in the pocket. And the most pod is bigger than what's in here. So you have just better quality overall, even though it's less megapixels. Uh, actually, it might be the same. I'll have to look that up. It might be a 12 megapixel sensor, to be honest, uh, which is what is in here, and I think it's what's in the pocket. Um, so we've got that. So advantages, I know what I have, right? Um, I've got a workflow that works really well. The using the using the pocket, I don't get any interruptions. Why when I use the I can use the phone or I can use the iPad, but the iPad's the better of the two to use, so I can monitor things. But the Vix and with the Vixia, um, I have a remote that I can use with it. Uh, I can look directly into the lens, uh, and then I can just look. Yep, yep, real quick look and see if the little red dots above my head right there uh, on, on the LCD. All right, uh, disadvantages. Well, for the Vixia, uh, it's bigger. It's not that much bigger, but you know, it's extra bulk. Um, I do have, I, the, the battery that I have on it, it doesn't, it won't tell me how much battery life's on it because it's a third party battery. Um, but if I use the, um, the USB thing, I don't have to worry about that. Though I have it hooked up to the pocket and the pocket doesn't show that it's full, has, has full battery. Not sure what's going on with that. Um, so I'm going to figure that out. Anyway, uh, uh, so disadvantage of that, disadvantage of the pocket is that um, while I can do remote, I can't, I don't have like a front facing LCD I can use. I can, but if I use that, then it automatically tracks me and see, it doesn't track me because I have it set to not do that. Uh, I can have a set to track me in, in, the, in it, how it's faced, but if I have it faced where I can see the little, the little tiny LCD screen, then it automatically tracks. There's no way to turn that off. And I experienced that with Gruet. I, did, I had to like kind of like try to put it in the middle so it wouldn't like pick up either one of us. Um, but that LCD screen is so small, you can't really see it from far away. It's, it's just really good for like a selfie. Um, and then the advantage to this, well, I just remembered that this has a 1080p 30 frames per second camera on the front facing camera, which is good, but not as good as this camera because this is 12 megapixels pixels, and this is seven megapixels. So not as good quality. 
All right, so advantages of getting the iPhone 11. Well, it's of course the latest and greatest, but so the regular iPhone 11, two cameras, both 12 megapixels, uh, but this is also a 12 megapixel camera when you have it oriented like this, how you would take video. I don't know why, I guess there's two cameras in there. If you have it like this, it's seven megapixels, but it can do 4K 60, game changer. iPhone 11 Pro, I'm not gonna worry about Pro and Max, I'm not gonna get the Max anyway, I don't like the form factor, but as far as the camera, it's exactly the same. The only thing difference is the screen's bigger and a little bit extra battery life. Um, you have the three cameras on the back, so you have the wide, ultra wide, which is the iPhone 11 has, which it comes in handy. I wouldn't need the moment wide angle lens at all, from what I can tell, but the Pro has the uh, telephoto lens, so the zoom lens. So you've got all three of those, and then of course the same front facing camera, the 712 setup, you know, 4K 60p, um, which means I can have this facing me. So the disadvantage using the phone is that if I don't put it in the airplane mode or I don't uh, take, make it so there's no cell at all, then um, I still run the risk of the same thing with this, that the, the, whatever camera app I am using might stop recording. The Filmic Pro, it definitely does. Now Filmic Pro, so they announced a new Filmic Pro comes out later this year. Uh, the game changer on that, and this is what they highlighted on it, is it can pick up at least two, if not three, or all four cameras on the iPhone and record all of them simultaneously. That is phenomenal. Would I use it? Probably not, but I could see there might be a situation where I'm, say, sitting across from somebody in an interview situation, and I can have, you know, I'd be sitting here, I could see my, I could see, I, I'm looking at here, the front facing's got me, this one's got you, and it records both at the exact same time. So there is that, but I don't know if I'd use that, but the Filmic Pro app is still even much better than using the regular app on here, um, mainly because you can still do, you can do um, remote control with it, and I definitely would have to uh, uh, put everything into airplane mode slash take off the cell, take off cell service, which is fine because the Wi-Fi is a direct Wi-Fi link to the phone. So uh, that is, that's it, man. Um, let's see. Uh, another thing about 4K, shooting 4K video, and, and you could still do it with this, is that when you zoom in, so right now, the field of view, uh, so Monday's episode, I was talking about field of view and bokeh and all that. That's actually depth of field. The field of view on the Vixia is pretty good. I mean, my hands come off of the, off of the screen, but um, when I do record my shows with the green screen behind me, I actually have to zoom in at 105%. It does really good. At 105%, you don't really get any noise. You know, it doesn't, you know, it looks still sharp. Um, but if I zoomed in at say 200%, it would look crappy. Or 150% would look kind of crappy, all right? So on the pocket, 4K, much wider field of view. So boom, Vixia, uh, Osmo Pocket. Um, but if I zoomed in uh, at 150%, there's no, no, no degradation of, of image. And that's actually, the key, that's actually the benefit of shooting 4K and then downscale to 1080p, which is what Monday's episode was. 4K, 60, 60 frames per second, um, downscale to 1080p, 30 frames per second. So anyway, so that is, uh, that's the last thing to talk about. So uh, again, pose the question to you guys. This, uh, should I get this? Remember, this is an out of cycle episode. It's not on the podcast, it's not, it's not on the website. This is not a wine review. So, um, so if you came over here because you saw me talking about the iPhone 11 and cameras and all that, and like, well, what does Leet Wine have to do with iPhones and all that kind of stuff? Now you know why, uh, because that's what I use when I go out into the field. So uh, if you like wine, subscribe to, the, subscribe to the podcast or subscribe to the YouTube channel um, because if I get to 1,000 subscribers, I start, can start making money again. Not that I made any money, but I can have the opportunity to. Uh, like the video if you liked it. If you didn't like it, okay, leave me a comment. What do you think? Stick with what I got. Uh, don't increase what I pay per month. Uh, oh yeah, if I do the regular iPhone, it supposedly drops down like $29 a month, but I don't know if that's true because this isn't paid off yet. So I probably wouldn't really save that much money. Um, buy one of the two phones 
wait till next year and buy the next phone, which is a small bump because that's what every, that's, you know, this is the big, this is the big uh, uh, upgrade year. Next year will be the small upgrade year. And then I can keep this phone because it be paid off and use this as my camera phone at that point. I'm um, use this as my camera. Uh, so what should I do? Anyway, that's going to do it for uh, this Tuesday. We'll see everyone hopefully on Thursday. Well, I'm going to be doing it, but hopefully you'll stop back in and check out some vermouth.